It's our sixth birthday episode. I can never say sixth. Sixth. Sixth birthday episode. We're six. To celebrate, we're going back to the beginning for some retro problems and dilemmas. Jordan's taking a stand and banning a topic from the podcast. Plus, I've got a new routine to start my day, and it's making me gag. <laughs> Hello there, and welcome. To help I sexted my boss. That's not going to marry up with the upbeat fun music, is it? Oh, sorry. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, how soon after getting a new look should someone get a new look? How do you get over the heartbreak that your friend and co-host is going on tour without you? Sorry. Tickets and my book available, oh, William Hansen, oh, oh, UK. Sake. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexed your boss? But we're not usual agony aunts, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert, viral TikToker and author. No, we're not Jordan North. President of the United States this time next year. I know, I, I, I have tried. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, they did ask, but I wasn't born in the United States. Anyway, no, we're not Jordan North, whatever you are. I'm more home counters, you're more home bargains. Oh, very good. And what is home bargains You've for those? You've never been in home bargains. Um, is it like B and M? <laughs> yeah. Right. Wendy loves her home bargains. When she comes back to the UK, she leaves an empty case. She takes all stuff over you can get tea bags or i used to, I used to take every thursday to own bargains well every couple of weeks so it's a, it's a straw when there are bargains for the home mm. right she used to give me money off my board if i took her off my rent i used to have to take her to big tesco's mm -hmm. i'm not even joking this was on thursday you see this but when i lived in box room she can't drive big tesco's mm -hmm. yeah aldi yeah own bargains yeah then booths then booths. Yeah, because she used to get a meat from booths. She used to get a brands from Tesco's, a cold cuts and cheeses from oh she drove me fucking crackers, <laughs> she did. Love you, Mum. Yeah. Um we're gonna do the toast. Can I ask which you now we've done two weeks with the sippy cup. Don't pull your face. I'm your mother. And it's you that I'm feeding. That's what she used to say. Would you like your sippy cup? No, or do I don't you think want you can be trusted I don't want with a the sippy glassware? Cup today, please. Well, it's here if you have an incident. Okay. I've, I've, oh, I broke a cup again today. I dropped a mug. Why are you telling me this as I'm I giving you a glass? I just reminded. Oh, yeah. You know when you have to do... Do you ever have mugs and glasses in your room that you leave for a couple of days? No. So I did a big clear up this morning and I dropped one on the bloody stairs and the handle come off. You stupid boy. Um, oh, am I doing gin? You do the gin. Oh, oh sorry. You can always pick it up. Oh, where? Where? <laughs> oh, there we go. That's yours. I'll have the nice glass where you can have the cheaper version. Oh, um, bit immodest, and when I can, I have to not drink because obviously that's etiquette. Um, but I think we should toast us because we've just turned six. Oh. Have we? Yes. Oh, no one tells me how. <laughs> well, I'm telling you now. Are we six years old? Yes. Have we been doing this podcast for six years? That's how it works. Yes. Shit the bed. Yeah. Oh, wow. We, and it's often said on this podcast, we have the humour of a six-year-old. I just got my first job at the old place. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. A lot changes. A lot changes in six years. I know. I mean, yes, because when we started this, you were unemployed by the BBC. <laughs> And look how far we've come in six years. <laughs> it's nice to know. I left on my own accord. Okay. <laughs> now it sounds like a dinner if I keep saying Yeah, but anyway. it doesn't matter it how. Doesn't, anyway. Anyway, help I sexed my boss. Help I sexed my boss. We're six. Oh, that's good. Six years ago. I know. Jesus. Turning off in my skinny jeans and my vans. Yes. I lived in a van at the time. <laughs> <laughs> You were like the lady in the van from Alan six, Bennett. Yeah, oh, I'm buzzing with that. Yeah, it's nice, isn't Who's it? Who's to another 60? 60? Yeah. We haven't done 60 yet. No, but another six. Another six. Yeah. Six days at this rate. Six years. Mm. That is mental. Yes. Wow. Um, you, uh, you you had a week off from Saturday Night Takeaway, but is it all going well? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, all good. Yeah, it's great. Um, Yeah, I've... 
the, the only problem this week is I've got a really stiff neck. I've got physio after this today. Didn't you say we were having a photo shoot the other day and you went, I think I've swallowed a Viagra pill because I've, I've got a stiff neck? I've choked on a Viagra, the oldest joke in the book. Okay. Honestly, this is the worst neck pain I've ever had. Like, you know when you wake up and you slept a bit funny? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, I, my, I can barely move my neck so all week. So I've got in contact with, do you remember when I did the rowing challenge for Comet Relief? Yes. I got in contact with the physio that was there, Rosie. So after this recording today, she's going to sort my neck out. Is she? I mean, I, I've been sleeping on like one pillow because that's meant to be good for it. I stink a deep heat. <laughs> Someone said to me the other day, I give them a hug. He went, You smell nice. What have you got on? I went, Deep heat. <laughs> he went, Oh, where's that from? I went, No, deep heat. <laughs> they were like, Oh, I thought it was dip teak. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they said. They wanted to dip teak. Oh, I'm more dip teak, you're, you're more, more deep, deep heat. heat. So there we so go. Stink of the, oh, my dad used to stink a deep heat when he'd been on exercise. It always reminds me of that. Right. In army. What's the difference between, other than the, the sensation between deep heat and deep freeze? Uh, I don't know, but I'd highly recommend don't touch your cock on either of them. Right. Not that I've <laughs> just I've, been, I've heard. So if you rub it on, wash your hands. Don't then go for a wee. Mm. Yeah. Or if you do, do a sit-down wee. Yeah, do a sit-down wee. It's probably better. But, um, I actually hurt it as well. I realised during Saturday What are we night, talking about? Uh, my neck. Right. I actually hurt doing Saturday night takeaway because I broke up that morning. It was really sore. It was like agony. And then in rehearsals, I'd like fling my head back and I was like, right, this is... Why were you flinging your head back? So then on the way home, I had to get one of those neck things. Not a neck brace, not like having very <laughs> A neck pillow, then you know the U-shaped ones. Okay. Forty quid. One of them were going for. He said it was like the Bentley of neck pillows. I was like, in W. H. Smith, it's services. I was like, have you got any cheaper ones? He went, yeah, they're twenty quid. I went, yeah, forty quid for one of those neck pillows. And well, it still hasn't worked. Mm. Anyway, um, you were in someone's sitting room in a dressing gown. Can we talk about this? Yeah. So you were also on telly at the same time. Yes, I you? believe so. Yeah. So it'd be nice to see the overnights on those. So you were on the wheel at the mm -hmm. same time yep. on the BBC and I was yes. on Saturday Night Takeaway. As it goes, I was meant to be off that day. Yeah. And I knew. I never And you had it. to phone that William's on TV. I've got to be on. Basically, that's what yeah. I said. But um, they, I was, we surprised a nan that was in the audience, Anita, and I was in a living room and we played a game of Spot the Difference and I was in her dressing gown. Right. And the G and Divas went Fucking wild. Through the DMs and going, of course, Jordan's in a dressing gown. What's, where's the bell? <laughs> Where be was the bell? With that. It just wrapped around my neck. No. <laughs> <laughs> the thing. So, yeah, I was in a, in a dressing gown. I, lo I do love working on that show. Nice. I do. Yeah, I hit my body weight in mini eggs that day. Really? Mm. Why? Because you're just a lot of rehearsing. You need the energy. Oh, I see. Not yeah. Anita didn't have lots of mini eggs in her cupboards. How was the wheel? I mean, we filmed it back in May. I can I, hardly remember. How many? Is this the fourth time you've been on now? Yeah, was, yeah, I can't remember. Why did I never get asked to come back? I don't know. I'm really concerned about that. And I, I seen Michael McIntyre and his wife, uh, uh, the NTAs, uh, and I was dead nice to him. So I don't know mm. why I've not been invited back. There's loads of people that have been on since. Yeah, pretty much everyone gets invited back. Josh Whitaker comes on every week. Yeah. And well, you. I, yeah. It didn't really land on me very much this year. That was where I did the... Two fat ladies thing. Yes. With the... Rosemary Schrager. Maybe she's an exec on it and she's banned you. Yeah. Sorry again, Rosemary Schrager. If, if you don't know, have we talked about this? We have. Oh, I, I was chatting to her in a dressing room and I said, I used to love you on Two Fat Ladies when I was a kid. <laughs> she was... Not one of them. <laughs> she was like, I wasn't... I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> As we were eating a cold Nando's. Ooh. <laughs> sorry, Rosemary. Have I ever talked to you about my parents' dog car? Your parents don't have a dog, do they? We did. We did. She died. Did you have a dog? Yeah, Dido. What was your dog called? Dido. I'm sure we've talked about Dido before. You had a dog called Dido? Yes. No wonder it died. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dido named after the Greek goddess of love. Oh, okay. Did you in fact, in a bizarre twist of fate, can you remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Mikey's uh, fellow bricklayer, Max, who didn't believe that uh, we listened to Capital. Yeah. It was actually his dog, and he actually coincidentally grew up in the house a few fields away from us. And Dido basically kept running to just sort of kept running away. And this anyway, Agatha Christie, this. My parents would always hand Dido back, and, and then Max and his family were moving. And long story short, we then took custody of Dido, in effect. So we took her from sort of age five onwards. How um, long did you have her for? Until she died. I think she was 11. 
Oh, yeah. what breed was she? She was a golden cocker spaniel. Okay. I'm sure we'll share a photograph if those want to see it. When she died, yes. did you put her in the freezer? No. No, she went through the proper processes. Okay. But... Frank didn't go in the freezer, by the way. Did he not? No. They didn't, no, they they didn't have space. Thinking of it. Yeah. Mm. But my parents... And again, sort of, you know, growing up, you sort of, a bit like you and your parents, you just sort of accept things as normal. And it's only when you look back on things and you go, I think that was a little bit weird. So my parents bought a third-hand car. It was a purple Suzuki Alto. So that's what they use for dog walks, so they didn't mess up their own car. That's the most handsome thing I've ever heard. The dog was very shreddy, darling. I would not get into the car if there was dog hair all over the place. It's very common. It's very dirty. I, we, we got a Suzuki for the doggy. So we had the Dido car, which just sort of, they would, they would sit in this very low, sort of almost Postman Pat-esque car and zip off and walk the dog. In its own special car. You must have had money to burn <laughs> if you had a car for well, a dog. If you had all the money in the world, I don't think I would spend money getting a dog car. Mm. I'd just probably just pay to get my car valeted a lot. There were times in my childhood where we nearly had to sell our car just to keep going for a month. Yeah, well, we bought one for the dog. Yeah, mm. there you go. Mm. When we got a car for the cats, I thought that was probably a limit. Your dad's been gambling again. We might have to sell a car. I'm joking. My, dad's, my dad is not a gambler. That is no. a joke. He isn't. I'm not a gambler. One thing. You really not? No, I chain smoke and drink lots. And, <laughs> but I've, I've, gambling's not, I've never never been a, never really put a bet on. Not a big fan of poker. No. Anyway. Um, how's your TikTok going? Oh, uh, you're such a bitch. What? Well, yeah, it's fine. Two videos in. Two videos? Yes. <laughs> Go on, how many followers have we got? Oh. <laughs> it's Jordan North TikTok on TikTok. If you want to follow me. Go on, I'll have a look. You're such a bitch. No, I'm not a bit. I'm, I'm asking. I don't because... know how you use it. Oh, I've got uh, 2,104 followers. Oh, wow, that's good. How would you look at you? Do you get DM'd on TikTok? Uh, you can, it depends on your settings. Oh. Another channel for Jordan to read and sort of stroke his ego. <laughs> well, what do you do to your settings, settings and pros? I don't know, but maybe should we have a go at fiddling with your settings after we've finished recording? Yeah. How's your TikTok going? Yeah, great. Yeah? Yeah, in fact, I was invited to do a talk for TikTok the other day. <laughs> We actually, yeah. We ask them if they'll verify me. Um, only they normally they, the criteria for verification is you have to have done the wheel twice. <laughs> Anything else? No. So what did you do? You talk for TikTok? Are uh, you a spy? Am I a spy? Mm. Well, they're not verifying you now, are they? Well, <laughs> there's a lot. They're banning it in America, aren't they? It's moving through the House of Representatives. Yes. Um, I. Uh, just talked about, you know, my techniques. How or... many followers have you got on TikTok now? 1.7, 1.8 million. Wow. Yeah. Actually, my lower performing platform. There was a comment recently mm. uh, on one of the feedback that saying when it's, William just brags about his followers these days. I don't brag. I have said it a million times before. It does not matter how many you have. I'm doing it to slightly rub one in in Jordan's face. I beg your pardon. <laughs> because <laughs> <What> you... <laughs> <laughs> when Jordan became sort of stratospherically famous after I'm a celebrity. He would make many jokes, but potentially not on, on mic, about his follower account, and I'm just using this opportunity to get one back on him. <laughs> Every given opportunity. <laughs> he literally said the other week, oh, don't post, there's no point if only 800,000 people are going to see it. It's all meant in good humour. It's obviously much more important to be a nice person. Yeah. Oh, I ate an egg butty in a meeting this week, and I just want to... Sorry, you had eggs in the office. Uh, I just want to... Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I just want to put it out there. Right. Also, there was no napkin. So you know those... Oh, um, have I changed? You know those... Well, wait for the next bit. You know those uh, breakfast baguettes you get from Pret? Yes. The egg and bacon ones. Yeah. I love them. I'm like, I am. I go weak at the knees for them. <laughs> and I was in a meeting this week and they had a load in table. I go weak at the knees for a baguette as well. I bet you do. And I had it, and I was trying to be serious, and it was like everybody in the meeting, and it was it was like egg dripping yes. out of it onto oh. my trousers, no Ooh. napkin, all around my mouth, yep. all around me got crumbs everywhere, all on tape, egg everywhere. So mm. I'd just like to put it out. The etiquette of eating an egg butty in a meeting is don't do it. Yeah. Especially without a napkin. I just grabbed it from the table and like tried eating in between bites, and, it was every and when you bite into it, more comes out. Yeah. Can I say... I would say my rule for what you can and cannot eat in a meeting mm -hmm. is anything more than a polo mint or a breath mint 
But there's food. Just because it's there doesn't mean to say you have to have it. You can maybe take it and eat it later yeah. away from the meeting. But basically a breath mint is fine. Other than that, no. It's great at the new place because obviously at the old place you weren't allowed to get food and stuff because it was like license fee. Yeah. New place. Oh, God. It's like I'm like Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Every meeting I'm like, oh, 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 it's fantastic. What did you like? I had sushi of a week. Sushi? In a meeting. <laughs> Gosh, fish and eggs. You must be so popular in that office. Oh, I've got to, oh, oh, that's another thing. Mm. Uh, every morning yes. I've been gagging. Have you? I've got a tongue scraper. Oh, we have got a tongue scraper. So yeah. if, if you ever go past my ass in morning and night. And you hear a gagging sound. Oh, you hear me going. Eh, eh, eh. It's because I'm. Eh. You get used to it. Well, I've not got a great gag reflex anyway. Really? <laughs> yeah. So it's been known. So yeah, I'm getting used to it, but I might have to take a tongue scraper into work. If oh, I'm no, 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 <laughs> no. There are some things you don't take into work. No, and it's a tongue. Do they work? Do you want to smell my breath? No, not really. Uh, It'll uh, probably stink of D. Uh, uh, the bonnet? Yes. I've only had, Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> I've only had two coffees and a cigarette this morning, so go on. Let me know if you can... <laughs> oh. Can you actually smell that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway. Right. Should we go to Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week? Cue the jingle. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Cha 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 cha. Sorry. Uh, right, we've had loads of jokes sent in this week, so oh, thank good. you very much. This is from Hannah, following mm. on from a James Bond run. You know, Viagra won't make you James Bond. And I'll tell you the punchline after the break. All right, Gene Davis, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, this week's Jolly Joke of the Week is from Hannah Boochamp. Beecham. Beechamp. Beecham. Oh, like Flu Plus. <laughs> well, same pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, it says, because we did the James Bond joke last week, you know Viagra won't make you James Bond, but it will make you Roger Moore. <laughs> I mean, that is the same joke as last week, basically. No, it's not. I think we'll just do one for this week. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, there is a god. Do keep your DMs popping, sliding, yeah. if, you've, um, if you've got any more jelly jokes of the week for DM us. DM you on TikTok. Mm. I had a really good one this week, but I can't do it on there. No. From our late, Probably actually. not. Oh, okay. Oh, Save it for the tour. You know I'm not in any WhatsApp groups as well. What? I'm only in our WhatsApp group and the family WhatsApp group. Okay. And the one with Freddie. Uh, and the one with Freddie. And maybe a couple of work ones, but I'm not in like any ones for getting cancelled reasons. I've just been added to, you know, I'm going back to Benidorm for Bradley Stag do. Yes. Yeah. I've just yeah. been added to that group. Jordan has left that chat. How is he? Let me tell you. Yeah, okay. Mm. Right, now it's time for your questions and dilemmas, but with a twist. Would you open the envelope, please, William Hansen? We've got a nice envelope here, pink envelope. It says Willie and George. Oh, okay, what's this? Oh, for the birthday princesses. Oh. Two pounds. They've left, They've the, left the cut. It's a, it's a, is um, it official Disney or knockoff Disney? Um, it's got Disney logo on the back, so it has must be got official. Disney logo. Um, which of those princesses we've got? Can you name those Disney princesses? Come on. Uh, you must have been into the princesses as a child. Is that Sleeping Beauty there? In uh, that's Sleeping Beauty, Aurora. Oh. Who's that? From Frozen? No. From uh, Rapunzel? Tangled, yes, Rapunzel. Oh, is Tangled Rapunzel? Yes. Oh. Uh, is that from Aladdin? Yes, Jasmine. Jasmine. This one? Not sure. That's Mulan. Oh, okay. Who's this one? Moana. This one? Oh, come on. That's the that's like the most popular Disney film ever. Belle. Yes. Is that Belle? From Beauty and the Beast. Punch up, punch up, punch up, punch up, punch up. Oh, and inside is Cinderella. Sorry, I got so excited by that. Um, there's Cinderella. Happy birthday, boys. Producer Ben here. Oh. I'm sending you a little sixth birthday treat from the other side of the world. A game of Have We Changed? You're about to hear some problems and dilemmas from our first six episodes. Oh, God. Which were March and April 2018. Oh, no, I don't want to do this. You know I hate listening back to it. You'll also hear the advice you gave at the time. But has our advice or your advice changed six years on? Let's find out. Bye, guys. Oh, thank... Oh, God, don't. I, you know, I can't watch myself back. I can't listen to myself back, but I certainly cannot listen to myself back from 2018. Okay, this first one, it's a Twitter question from the second episode. 
Quick one for the labs. Looking through Twitter, someone's RT'd a post by my best mate's ex, which is rather hilarious. Should I feel guilty about liking it? Um, no. No. I'd say not, no. Because, especially if it's gone absolutely viral... Yeah. ...and it's like, it's it's gone beyond just your immediate social circle, I would say it's fine. OK. What did we actually say at the time? I think your allegiance should be to your friend, even if... Yeah. Do you know what? Any social media, if it's going to get in trouble with friends and exes, don't I like believe it. there is a vernacular phrase, bros before hoes. <laughs> oh, my God. Who the heck have I done that podcast with? <laughs> I can't. Wow. Don't forget... You, I, you, were, you had a funny voice. I was on a stag do. I was on a stag do before we recorded them. Oh, my Christ. Wow. OK, let's do another. OK, this is a dating dilemma from the third episode. I was on the way home from the pub where my boyfriend of four months had abruptly just dumped me when I got a text from a guy who I knew had been interested in me in the past. The snake. Fast forward 45 minutes and I was en route to my first date with him. How soon is too soon to be moving on? I, I mean, I'd say, why not? It's just been dumped. It's just been offered. No, that's rebound plus. I think that's fine. We, especially, we've all, yeah, I think that's totally fine. Not 45 minutes yeah, after you've, you've just been, been dumped. dumped. It's just a little... I think so you need time to process. Text the edge off. Let's listen to what we actually said at the time. That is way too soon. I think 45 minutes is quite short. OK, well, you and I agreed there, but you've changed your policy. Yeah. So if you got dumped, would you go out on another date 45 minutes later? No. Well, then why are you giving that advice? I don't know. Let's do another one. God, okay. my advice is awful. Well, I think this is this is now from episode five. It's a wedding-related dilemma. I have a feeling this was recorded on a separate day, so your, your uvula might have recovered. This is from Stacy. Stacy. I've heard of some worrying new trends at weddings in the recent years, William and Jordan, and I wanted to run them past you. OK. Cheese instead of a wedding cake. Common. Kebabs from a truck at half past 11 during the dancing. Right. Common. <laughs> Organised dancing down the wedding aisle. Common. Dogs being involved as ring bearers. Awful. <laughs> Email RSVPs wedding invites. Online will for a start. The word is invitations. The verb is invite. And also it's common. <laughs> well, it's nice to see I sat on that fence there, didn't I? I, 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 I think that's fine. I don't think that's common. And I, I stand like... by all of that, although I have subsequently, in the six years we've been doing this, gone to quite a lot of weddings where all of the above has happened. Yeah, like pizza and burger vans at a wedding at night. It's great. You know, when you do the night. Yeah, I'm not normally there by that point. Okay, let's listen to our reply. Common, common, common. Awful, common. (laughs) (laughs) What do you make of that couple that recently had their wedding reception at KFC? It's their wedding, it's their choice, it's their money. Yeah. Would I do that? No. I do like a good wedding and I think it's nice. I get a bit blubbery at weddings. Some people do actually like the union of two people coming together and witnessing that. (laughs) So do I. Not just the WKD and Stella Artois. (laughs) Right. Your voice is getting worse. I I think we recorded about four or five in one setting, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did quite a lot. You, I'd, I'd literally flown in from Amsterdam the day before. I'd, I'd forgotten we were Been recording. on the piss all weekend, and I did used to smoke Rich and Super Kings back then. Right. And they were harsh. Yeah. They were harsh. That's what I used to sound like on Rocky Femme on a Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. Wow. Well, sadly, we're now going back to episode two, so we're not. The voice is not going to get any better. It's another Twitter question. I sound so different. Do I sound more northern? There, yes. Do I? Yeah. Now it's like listening to the King. <laughs> Hello, Capital Breakfast. God. Hello, Sean. A lot has changed. In Hello, Christopher. Six years, man. <laughs> Go on, let's, uh, let's listen to this one then. Much has been said about losing grammar and sense via text, but how far can we go on Twitter? Had a full-blown argument with a colleague the other day about whether or not it was acceptable to put a full stop at the end of a tweet. How much do we need to adhere to grammar on Twitter? Well, it's now called X, of course. Yeah. Is this when we had themed episodes? Yes. So it was the themed Twitter. I think it was our social media episode. You something. sound posher. Now or then. then. Yeah. Mm. I, people have said that I have become less uptight. Yes, definitely. Which gives you a rough idea how I was six years ago. You weren't even married then. No, you've loosened me up. Mm. For sure. I think I probably said 
it doesn't matter if you put a full stop at the end of it. And I probably said, and I would stand by this, you still put a full stop and proper grammar throughout any social media post. Let's have a listen. Very much so. It's a form of uh, say that. written communication. And especially if your Twitter is public, I think as a potential employer, I would be looking at your Twitter, if I were certainly considering you for a quite a serious job, to see what you're, you know, what you are like, sort of behind the, the smoke screen that is work. Because we all behave, well, not all of us, but some people behave differently at work than they do in their social lives. I'm a man who likes a comma. I'm yes. not going to lie to you. Do you like a colon? A, yeah, I don't mind a colon. Yeah. Semicolon. I don't mind a semi. No. <laughs> I I sound like one of those blokes that used to do fo- dirty phone calls from a phone box. <laughs> well, you weren't working. Do you remember much. them in the nineties? No, well, do you no. remember them? Your mum would get a call. Peter K does a great sketch on it. Turn that telly down. Oh, Biggie, your tits. That, it, that sound like one of those blokes in the mm. 90s that used to do dirty phone calls from a... I also do like the fact that during this, when you're clearly trying to compensate for the fact your voice has maybe slightly softened in six years, you've now gone back to being... A no, I haven't. Older. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. And I look how I sound back then. Mm. So if you didn't know what looked like back then... Were you straightening your hair back then? Probably not. I think it was a bit longer, though, okay. wasn't it? But you, I was... Yeah. <laughs> I think you sound endearing. You're still the same old Jordan that we Thank all you. love. Oh, I know that. I do, however, si- sound completely insufferable with the advice that I'm giving no, and how don't. seriously I'm taking it, which I is quite funny. I can't believe we've lasted six years. And finally, it's another dating woe from the third episode. I had a feeling that my relationship was ending, but instead of accepting it, I decided to throw a grand romantic gesture. Rose petals and a surprise date, including dancing to our favourite song, Surprise Night Out. Turns out it was a waste of time. He dumped me the day after. Can a romantic gesture ever save a relationship? Ooh. Can... Well, if, if your love language is gestures, then potentially it could. But I think probably it's uh, any sort of romantic gesture might be if if the relationship's already a bit doomed and on the rocks, probably not. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. But romantic gestures can help a relationship for sure. What's your love language? What does that mean? Like some people like physical touch. Some people like acts of service. Others like rimming <laughs> and that sort of thing. I forget what the others are, but what do you like? All of the above. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I've never heard of that before. I love language. Oh, no, it's quite a popular thing. So things that you like mm. so to be shown that you're loved. Yeah. And it doesn't need In to be from a romantic partner. It could be from a family member, a close friend. Well, I don't want my mum to rim me. <laughs> Do well, I? that's in the trailer, isn't it? <laughs> <It's> so. <laughs> right. Let's do a deal. You know, we start talking about poo. Yes. Let's stop talking about rimming. Well, it's it's adjacent, today. isn't it? Right. Okay. Mm. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I've never really thought about it. Just met me a brew in bed. I think that's one of the most loveliest gestures you can do. My granddad used to do it for my grandma yep. every morning, and my dad does it for my mum. That's nice. Every morning when he's home, he takes my brew up. And Katie Fisselton's dad does it for her mum as well. So I think it's a northern thing. I think it is a northern is thing. It? Does your dad not take your mum a brew up in the morning? Not, no, she will be sitting at her... Um, dressing table doing her makeup and she'll text my father when she's ready for coffee and then he'll bring up a little tray with coffee so he does in a way yeah but she's not in bed she's i think the, that's she's at the dressing i think table. that's one of the most simplest but loveliest gestures you can do yeah this is shortly after he's turned on the shower for her bring up a, a brew and mm. on royal family dave used to take denise a brew up and then light a fag for her while she's still asleep they say romance is exactly. dead let's see what we said to that one uh, several years ago <laughs> I think if you know that it's going to end and you've probably got fairly good evidence, I think you do need to sort of just grin and bear it. But I think before it got to that stage, if I were in that position, I think you need to try and remind them as to why you have sort of fell in love with each other in the first place. Oh, do alphabet dating. Have you heard of this? I have heard of this. What are your thoughts on alphabet dating? For anybody listening, by the way, alphabet dating is basically where you start with the letter A... And you think, what are you laughing at? And you think of, um, you, w- every week you've got to go on a date and it's got to do with something beginning with A. So if it was uh, A, you'd go I to... I think we all know what that would be. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. B and C would be fun as well. <laughs> 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 yeah.
you're referring to anal, weren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you were, weren't you? I was referring to apples. Okay. Uh, we were quite funny back then, weren't yeah. we? Yeah. We were. I think What's we happened? <laughs> oh, I can't get over how bad I sound. Well, mm. how funny. What a blast from the past that was. What a blast was. from the past that was. Happy yeah. sixth birthday, weren't Yeah, happy birthday. Sorry, I would have... Happy sixth birthday, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! So nice that producer Ben's flown in for our sixth birthday. Oh, hey guys, just want to wish you a uh, <laughs> happy sixth birthday. Um... It was six years ago. And didn't he have a top knot then? He did, didn't he? He had a top knot. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did. I would have absolutely taken the... He had a bit of a cockney accent as I'd well. I'd also like to know, Gene Devers probably that, that sort of go back and listen to the old episodes might be able to tell us, when was the first... Because it wasn't in the first couple of episodes that we even mentioned producer Ben. But when did we even start mentioning him? Matt, was it like season two? No, I think it was series one, but was I it? can't remember when. The other thing we're looking for... Just whilst we're out there, we'll do a shout. It seems, seems topical. Is when was the first... And I remember we recorded it in my old flat. So it must have been series three, maybe four. You asked a question about my mother. You had not met her at this point. And Is this I, in London? Yeah. Oh, OK. So maybe actually it was series one or two. And I made some reference to she likes a drink, which, of course, inspired the impression. I've been doing that for six years. Yeah. Well, five and a half. So if anyone can find that... The I'd first be... impression of William's mother... Mikey and mm. producer Ben, maybe. I think producer Ben is a bit further down, really. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, if you need our help with something, then we'd love it if you get in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com. You can DM us. We're at sexofmyboss on the socials. Or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply in one of our luxury greeting cards of executive self seal envelopes. The address is on the website sexofmyboss.com. We're now going to bring out a giant birthday cake. <laughs> and somebody's going to pop out of it. Quick, give it a blow. Wearing just a sash. <laughs> Happy birthday. Who's this? To you. It's me, Mikey. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to you, my little flower pot. <laughs> Happy birthday. Help my sex to me, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Mikey. Time for a blow. You're welcome. <laughs>